Arcade Heroes. Greetings, it's Adam with ArcadeHeroes.com, and today I'm here to talk about financing. And of course, when you hear the word financing, you probably think of the dirty word debt. And personally, I hate debt. I do not like owing money or making those payments when if I didn't have to have that coming out of my account every month, then I would be more free to be able to save it up and purchase things outright. That's what I would love to do. But the reality of life is often that you just don't have that luxury. And as the saying goes, to make money, you have to spend money. Unfortunately, that's often true, especially in business. And so I want to discuss some financing options that are available in the arcade and amusement industry for any of those who might be out there looking to get into the business or just curious how it works. Now, these options that I'm going to talk about today only apply to commercial entities, somebody who is in this arcade business to actually make money with it. It does not apply to residential customers, those who just want to get an arcade machine for their house. And so while you can still find financing ways to get that, like through your bank or credit union or something like that, that's just not what I'm going to discuss. It's just going to be for commercial use. And so while I just said I loathe debt and getting into it I've had to do it it's ever since I opened up business because I was not one of those who came from money I didn't I didn't play the stock market or go out to Vegas and get a nice winning there or um, have a rich family member help me get started I had to get an SBA loan yes I did actually get some investments from family members but it, most of my initial capital came from the SBA loan and as any of you who have watched my previous videos talking about purchasing arcade games or pinball machines you know that this stuff is very expensive and when it comes to starting a small business it's a lot more expensive it can be a lot more expensive to start an arcade as opposed to something like a cafe or a clothing store or something like that of course those also have their expenses that are attached to them as well and I know depending on the type of clothing store or restaurant it can get pretty pricey but when it comes to an arcade the equipment that you have to buy which is going to be the mainstay of your business in a lot of instances it's going to be very pricey it can cost anywhere from uh, say if you're lucky you can find some classic machines from the 80s that cost maybe a few hundred dollars but if you want to get anything brand new which is generally the money maker you're looking at anywhere from maybe 3,000 on the lowest end to more typically around 10,000 12,000 there and can skyrocket up to 40,000, 50,000 and there's some VR systems which are in the 80 to 100,000 dollar range as well. Now when it comes to financing these things I do not believe that most lenders are touching those big VR systems. Uh, there might be one or two out there but I've not really heard of a lot of financing options in that regard. Uh, but again, that's just not something I really focus on. And of course, there's a lot of arcades out there which do have other attractions that go beyond just having an arcade like what I do. They will have a cafe or restaurant component to it, which makes it entertainment. Uh, or when you have something like a family entertainment center that always has multiple attractions like maybe bowling and mini golf and laser tag and an inflatables area or a ropes course, etc. And so this is not going to cover a lot of those other attractions. I believe there are some lenders out there that may handle those larger scale, sometimes we call them medium scale attractions or there's large scale attractions. And that I'm just focusing on arcade equipment. And so, yeah, this is more focused on the little guy and say like if you want to become an arcade operator of some sort you can do the fixed location thing or you can do what we call street operations or route operations where you have some pieces of equipment and you install it into somebody else's business like a restaurant a gas station a rest stop etc 
and make money off of it that way but of course then you also have a split that you have to do with the location themselves because they don't they won't just put it in there for free and not make anything off of it and so that's how that balance has to go so who is out there that offers these sorts of solutions well we have apex commercial capital they used to be known as first lease not sure why they changed their name but they did and so they are at firstleaseonline.com. Now with every single one of these, there'll be some sort of application that you'll want to, that you'll need to fill out and go from there. But generally speaking, they're also going to want you to be talking to a distributor first. And so oftentimes you'll be talking with your distributor and they will recommend whichever company that, that I'm going to mention that may best fit your needs and there can be some variations as to who they will lend to or how lenient they are or what their interest rates are and whatnot that's something to discuss with your distributor salesperson of course the better relationship you have with that person you know the better that they know what you're trying to do then they can make a better recommendation and speaking of distributors the only arcade distrib equipment distributor I know of that has in-house financing is Betson and they just call it Betson Financial Services and so they have a whole section dedicated on their site to that there and sometimes they even have specials now other companies like I'll mention here will often have specials I haven't seen a ton of them post pandemic but as you can see here from Betson's side it seems like they have a few with Angry Birds, Break the Plate, Carnival Will, uh, Minecraft Dungeons and so on and so th those will always be announced in some sort of thing like a press release or on different distributor websites or manufacturer websites if they have worked out a deal with with one of these companies then they'll be able to mention that but uh, that's Betson with their in-house another one that just also changed their name and I'm not sure why everybody's changing their name lately <laughs> but this used to be known as Vendlease and now they're known as Leaf Commercial Capital and so they also have some solutions there and discuss that we have lease process which uh, as you can see from the photos in the background it looks like they love covering other in I, I believe all of these companies cover other industries than amusement uh, you know just generally small business different types of small businesses but one thing that I know is different about lease process at least back when I used to sell arcade machines and I was recommending uh, companies for customers to look at lease process would come up when I had customers from Canada who needed financing as at least at the time this could be different now uh, and I haven't sold games in years so I'm not 100% sure but at the time lease process was the only lender who would help Canadian customers and so again if you are in Canada or some other country just ask your distributor who might help you in your situation but at least again when I was selling stuff US and Canada were the only ones where we had any sort of option available if you are in like the UK or France or uh, Mexico or Colombia or wherever else I'm just unfortunately not familiar with who might be a lender in those countries but your distributor if they know the territory as well then they should be able to point you to the right company and then last but not least we have Univest where I believe one thing that they seem to offer differently uh, but again this is just best of knowledge I haven't checked with this on the other companies but these this company is known to offer working capital loans and it's almost like a low interest rate credit card I believe and so just again all best to my knowledge and now another thing I need to stress I am NOT recommending one of these over another um, just showing you what options are out there it's not a lot and um, but of course we are a relatively smallish industry it's not as big as it was say back in the 80s but it still does exist that's one of the points of this channel and the website is to help you 
know about what's going on in the arcade industry and knowing that it still is alive and there's still brand new games coming out all the time. I just updated our new releases page uh, the, yesterday to show some new games that have launched in North America and elsewhere. And this is all, everything you see that I'm scrolling on right now has been released just this year and then of course we have a pretty extensive coming soon list as well and so for a dead industry that's uh, quite a lot of content that's coming out that's also very expensive content yes it's not as much as what you see on steam or eShop or psn on a or xbox live arcade on a daily basis but you know, of course it's a different dynamic since everything here is going to cost hundreds or thousands of dollars instead of you know, anywhere between five bucks to maybe 60 bucks or 80 bucks so those are the options and again they may have options like just lease to own where you make payments for a certain amount of time and then at the end of that period you may have to do an entire uh, lump sum to finish it off if you wish to keep the equipment and um, if it's but there can be variations in, in each one of these deals that you work up. You want to ask about it. It just depends on what you want to do. If you want to have lower risk, then you want to ask, well, do you have any sort of program where I can release it for a certain amount of time and once the, the 36 months or 48 months is up, um, decide whether or not I want to give it back to you. And then if that's the case, you know, they can set it up. But I would think that in those instances, it might have higher interest rate as opposed to something where you're just leasing to own it or just making payments. And when the payments are done, you fully own the equipment. Now, another thing to stress with these is when you do a deal, when you sign a contract to finance, it's not going to be refundable, it's not going to be returnable. So if there is a problem with the equipment when you receive it, and you also have to verify that with the lender, they ask for the serial number, they ask for confirmation that it arrived at the location, and on the contracts that you sign, it states that you will be putting it at a particular location with the address there, and so it has to go to that address. And so they're pretty strict about enforcing all that but uh, when it comes to that just if there was a problem where the machine wasn't working you just work with your distributor and the manufacturer like if they did send you a lemon which is rare that they would be able to get it corrected and fixed and but you would have to let them know about it right away and not wait a year and then claim that it uh, <laughs> suddenly didn't it didn't work when you got it they're not gonna buy that uh, but, yeah, those are the financing options. The only other thing I can think about that a lot of people ask about is revenue sharing. Now, revenue sharing is not leasing. It's not financing. It's where typically what a route operator does is revenue sharing, where, where again, you take the equipment into a location and you work out something with the location owner to decide what the split's going to be and generally speaking with older content it'll be a 50 50 split but newer stuff can be 60 40 or 65 35 or 80 20 it just depends again on how expensive it was for you the operator to purchase it and how you're going to be able to make your money back on that and so just some things to keep in mind that Revenue share is not available on a nationwide basis. None of these companies that I've mentioned here do revenue sharing. They, again, are only for financing, leasing, and some variable programs in that regard. Revenue sharing is generally not handled by distributors either. It may happen, but they can't do it nationwide. One example that I know of that they call it more rentals is like primetime amusements. They only handle it in the state of Florida and maybe parts of southern Georgia uh, where they have a reach. But that's the problem with revenue sharing in the United States. It's a huge country, and when you're doing revenue share, the person who owns the equipment needs to be able to go out and service it. And so if you were, say, in Alaska and your operator is in Florida or something, then 
it's just not practical at all to be able to fly out there constantly every single week or once a month even to go and service the equipment or if you're using coins to be able to pull those coins out and so if you are somebody who's looking to get some revenue shared games you have to look locally you have to find an, a route operator to be able to handle that and of course if you wanted to you could look into financing or leasing if you don't have the capital to purchase a game outright and so that that's an option there that i totally get that business we want to reduce our risk where we can and revenue sharing is tends to be one of the lower risk ways to be able to see how a piece of equipment does in a location without spending those thousands of dollars it's just unfortunately it's impractical if not impossible in a lot of situations to be able to have that nationwide revenue share but financing should be available nationwide it's just it can depend how long you've been in business for depending on your personal credit even like if you don't have any business credit yet then they will take a look at your personal credit but i do remember when i first started i did try to get financing through firestone financial which as mentioned in another video no longer does lending to the amusement industry for some reason it's still not really clear why they stopped doing that but they were pretty much the biggest name that have been out there for that and um that they said that I had to have been in business for something like six months to a year before they would even consider me. And uh, even though I had good personal credit, they did want to avoid the risk of where in business, usually businesses fail within the first year. And so that also might be something that one of these other companies may say. It just depends. But... Hopefully that helps you get some information. Again, I am not recommending one company over the other and not telling you where to invest your money or how to invest it or anything. It's just some of the personal experiences that I've had. And yes, I've leased or financed a lot of the equipment that I have in both of my arcades because... I just don't have all the capital that I need to purchase them outright. But fortunately, in more recent years, I have been able to buy more games outright than I ever could when I first started. And so hopefully I'll get there at one point. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are and if there's any other subjects you'd like me to talk about if within the arcade business. And we'll catch you on the next video.